the easiest way to describe the delightful comic book series, Strange Haven, is to compare it to three television series. The first would be Twin Peaks, the second would be The Prisoner, and the third would be Lost. Elements from all three of these TV series make up the unique blend that is Strange Haven. Considering this is a British-produced comic book, there's likely some elements from British drama series also present. However, I can't speak to that with any authority. But it is a reasonable presumption, since the series seems to be easily compared to TV programs rather than to other comic books. The largest influence may be Twin Peaks. Since Strange Haven is mostly about quirky, unique characters in a small English village in the middle of nowhere. Comparisons to The Prisoner and Lost are somewhat slight, though. It has the tone of The Prisoner, since the characters all live in a village they cannot leave. But at the same time, no one seems too bothered by this fact, so it's an element that sits in the background. This connection is mostly an Easter egg for those familiar with the TV show, I believe. While Strange Haven preceded Lost by almost an entire decade, both have a similar overall direction. The characters that are focused on in the series seem to have a specific purpose in the overall story. Furthermore, the village of Strange Haven is important to the world at large. It is a focal point that maintains the balance between good and evil, basically. To be clear, these comparisons are a shorthand method using popular fiction to give one an overall description of the series. I'm not suggesting that Strange Haven is a comic book version of any of these TV shows. It is most definitely its own thing. The story begins with Alex Hunter, a man who is recently separated from his wife. Alex is on a road trip to clear his head and to get away from all the turmoil in his personal life. While lost in the middle of nowhere, he sees a woman standing in the middle of the road. He slams on his brakes and swerves, but he hits her despite this effort. When Alex wakes up the next day, he's informed that he crashed into a tree, but he is otherwise in good condition. The woman Alex thought he hit apparently doesn't exist. Over the next few days, Alex is introduced to Strange Haven and given a tour of this idyllic village. Despite the extensive damage done to his car, it is repaired within this time, and Alex is free to continue his journey. However, no matter what route Alex takes, he always ends up back at Strange Haven. After meeting some more locals and soaking in the friendly, rustic atmosphere, Alex decides to stay, make Strange Haven his new home, and begin a new life. As one might expect, there's a lot going on in Strange Haven that's hidden from view. Most notably, there is a secret occult society, heavily based on the Freemasons, called the Knights of the Golden Light. These knights wish to control the direction of Strange Haven. In opposition to this group is a small collective of spiritually based people who covertly thwart the knights from gaining too much influence. That's the overview of the series. However, it's not really about advancing a particular story. It's more about exploring the characters that inhabit this odd village. In fact, the strength of Strange Haven is its characters, all of which are unique or quirky and have their own voice and internal life. I can't think of one character within the series that feels incomplete. They all feel quite real and developed, with a point of view and a reasonable motivation to their actions. Furthermore, the story progresses through organic interactions and dialogue between the characters, and none of it feels forced or cheap. Certainly, there is no shortage of character monologues, but again, these arise through organic conversations. And there's a reasonable amount of back and forth between the speaker and the listener during these monologues. It's not simply one character speaking for the benefit of the reader. It's one character speaking for the benefit of the other character in the conversation. The relationships and interpersonal connections are immensely complex and dense, but it's not difficult to follow in the slightest. The writing is very on point and concise. And to use a popular term, you can never be certain who is an unreliable narrator. The beliefs and backstories of the characters are all played very straight. That is, despite how odd a character may seem, they believe in their story or their version of reality, regardless of whether it's true or not. This element is also represented in the artwork. We get to experience the character's point of view. That is, we see and hear what that particular character sees and hears. Whether this experience is a complex delusion or not is left up to the reader to decide. This is a technique that is used sparingly, but to great effect in my opinion. This element is expressed very succinctly by one character. This, more than anything, is likely the key to understanding the shared reality of Strange Haven and all the individual perspectives and personalities within that small community. These personal universes collide and interact, all within the protected space of the village. Strange Haven was self-published and entirely produced by Gary Spencer Millage. The series itself is 18 issues long, published over the span of 10 years, between 1995 and 2005. 
These issues were all collected in three trade paperbacks, which are easier to find than the actual issues. For completists, an excerpt of Strange Haven No. 1 was also featured in Cerebus No. 198. Original short material also appeared in the 1997 Staros Report and in the comic book anthologies Meanwhile and Negative Burn. What is unfortunate about the series is it currently has no conclusion. In fact, following the publication of the third trade paperback in 2005, the series went on an unannounced and indefinite hiatus. Strange Haven began at a terrible time for an independent series. The comic book market was in a state of decay, and new non-superhero content found little support from retailers and readers. While the series was a critical success, that didn't translate into a commercial success. It wasn't a failure, but Millage had to find other work to support himself while trying to produce this comic book. This led to many, many delays in its publishing schedule, sometimes as much as a year between issues, and that certainly contributed to Strange Haven's eventual decline into obscurity. Basically, the sales and the erratic publishing schedule of the series contributed to the series simply fading away. Certainly, Millage had the best intentions, but, well, one has to do what they can to pay the rent. So, at some point, Strange Haven stopped being a priority and, eventually, it stopped being produced at all. However, in 2014, in the pages of the newly relaunched British comic book magazine, meanwhile, Strange Haven made its return. Apparently this will be the fourth and final chapter to the Strange Haven saga, and it's in full color. Unfortunately, like the Strange Haven comic book, Meanwhile has a sporadic publishing schedule, so it may be some time before there is an actual conclusion to the series, but it is currently being worked on. It is possible that one day, in the not-too-distant future, there will be a fourth trade paperback that provides a resolution to the events occurring in Strange Haven. Until then, well, there are three well-written puzzle box collections to read and reread. That's it for today. Like, share, subscribe, and comment, and I will talk at you later. Until next time.